Nine matches in, with three points off the top and unbeaten in our last seven matches. In Ben Watson, we trust. Never had any doubts, none at all whatsoever. No, no, none at all. Greetings my excellent friends and welcome back to episode 11 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan and it looks like we might be able to fulfil that media prediction of second place after all. In the previous episode you saw us pick up a measly two points from the first nine that were available. Since then we have been on an unbeaten run. We drew against Farnborough in a match that I was hoping we would win, but then beat Wealdstone quite comfortably, with Thomas Hughes and Rob Street picking up the goals. Then, most impressively, we beat Maidstone, and that set us up for the next few matches. 0-0 against Dulwich Hamlet, but then home victories against Welling, 2-0 with Rob Street netting again, and Yeovil with Rob Street netting yet again, and Thomas Hughes. And as you can see here, they are players we have been utterly reliant on this season. Rob Street has scored five, Thomas Hughes and Romain Mundell three each. They look like a fantastic front three. And if we just take a deeper look at when Rob Street scores his goals, I am very confident now that we found a player who is going to get us the points that we need, not just padding out his numbers in easier matches. So Street against Dover scored the equaliser to get us a point. Also scored the equaliser against Farnborough to grab us another point. He scored the opener against Wealdstone to get us another three points. The opener against Welling, he is already responsible directly for at least eight of our 16 points this season. That is a phenomenal return. But for his five goals to be worth that many points, I am very happy with this piece of business. And it does mean we can probably say goodbye to Ollie Pierce. We've had bids in for him from Banbury, Bath and Dover. He hasn't yet played a competitive match this season. He's training terribly. He wants to leave. Ollie, you were great last year. You scored a hatful of goals, but you have been a victim of another player coming in and scoring more valuable goals. Rob Street might not score as many goals this season, but the ones he's getting mean more to us. But I must say, taking Pierce out of the equation, I'm really happy with how this squad are now playing. Street is playing out of his skin, as you've seen. Sammy McLeod has got a fantastic rating, despite being one of our lower ability players. Tizard, as Dinze's replacement, has come in and done a fantastic job. Collinge is performing consistently well too. Ezanolim is actually our best performing left back, despite only playing three matches so far. So we're now back in the playoff positions. We've got 16 points after nine matches. We are struggling to score goals. 11 scored so far, but we've only conceded five, which is comfortably the best defensive record in the division. Harrison Mail has now gone from shipping expected goals to preventing expected goals. Oh, it's a joy to behold. Although I have found a potential long-term replacement in Joe Wright. Yes, I know I signed two goalkeepers in the last episode. We've brought him in on trial to get a closer look. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if we make the call to bring him in and move Harrison Mail on for a bit of a profit. But before we make those decisions, we're playing today in the FA Cup second qualifying round. The board expect us to reach the first round proper this year. And look who we're facing. Hastings, again, who we struggled against this time last season. We could only draw with them in the first match before beating them in a replay. So I now am expecting that we do defeat them at the first time of asking. And as long as we do, I'm offering Ben another year as our assistant manager. He's studying for a Continental A licence currently, so it's only a matter of time, I hope, until his attributes improve further. He has proven to me that he can take this team and turn it around. I have not needed to get involved in the same way that I did last year when things were going wrong with uh, with Dave Hedges. This is all down to Ben. So a victory today and Ben Watson will be with us until the end of this season. It's time to take our little holiday. And it's over to Ben and the boys to show us what they're capable of against Hastings. Gone with a very familiar team. Whitting and McLeod in defensive midfield. Alarakia on the right wing. Hastings playing a 4-4-2. 
Half an hour in, we are absolutely dominating possession. 63% so far. Hughes is sent free down the left wing, cuts back inside, passes the ball to Collins, who's playing out of position, I would think, on the left of our defence. Normally, I would expect to see him on the right as a natural right footer, but McLeod takes a charge right through. Oh, and it, the reflection takes it just off the post. It is nil-nil at half-time, a fairly bleak match, I think. Let's see what Ben and the boys can offer up in the second half. We get yet another corner. Is this an opportunity for those set-piece routines? Saunders comes on for Alarakia now. Bit of fresh legs on the right wing. So Hughes floats the ball in. Collins was leaping for it, but uh, the Hastings defender leapt significantly higher. We get a corner on the other side. No, the ball is cleared away yet again. So Collins picks it up. Plenty of time to dwell on the ball, but he lost a... Oh, my word. He lofted a first-time early cross straight back in, which Street got on the end of, but was unable to put it past the Hastings goalkeeper. I'm starting to worry now that we're going to see the same issue we did last year and end up having to go to a replay. 85 minutes gone. Our best player, Mundell, is completely out of energy. Time is up. It is another replay. Well, we certainly did enough to win that match. We are struggling to get shots on target. But it's another clean sheet. As the rules of Moneyball clearly dictate, defence is more important than attack. So the fact that we've actually kept another clean sheet is something we need to be very proud of. Well done, Ben. I'm sure we will go away and defeat them at the second time of asking. But you know what, Ben? I'm holding off on that contract until we do. Ben and I on the same page. He's not disappointed with that result. We just need to win the replay. And if we play like we did tonight with a few small improvements, namely getting the ball on target, we can do just that. Well said, Ben. Nothing to be concerned about there. Except possibly the fact that our best player is out for a week. I hope that doesn't hold us back. Disappointingly though, Pierce is still with us. Despite wanting to leave, he's rejected contracts with Bath, Dover and Banbury. I suspect none of them are offering him anywhere near as much money as he's currently on with us. So we'll offer him out again and see what happens. Lamine Sheriff is now expressing a bit of concern about his playing time. A regular for us last year, starting 30 matches, but he's only started one in the National League this year. Whittingham basically coming in and taking his place by playing incredibly well. So we will have a word with him, and he's happy enough to be considered as a fringe player by the look of things. Simple, no need to make any promises. Ben can then use him in whatever way he deems most appropriate. So we're favourites once again for this match against Hastings. It's the replay. It's away from home this time. Surely, surely we can at least score. We're lining up with a similar-ish team this time. Far starting on the right wing. Alarakaya on the left, but still Street up front. I don't know how long McLeod and Street will last. I'm hoping they don't have to play too long, actually, because we are playing... Western Supermare in the league in just three days' time. And they are third currently. So one of our biggest tests since we went on this unbeaten run. Hastings get into a good position, though, to cross the ball. Which bounces loose, but Far can only kick it straight to one of their midfielders. Although their midfielder then passes it straight to our defender, who heads it straight to their winger who passes it straight to our defender. This is cracking non-league football right here. Nobody keeping the ball at all and turning over after turning over after turning over. And the long hoofed ball over the top. How on earth did Hastings not score that? That was one of the worst finishes you will see all season. Their XG is 0.72 and I would imagine about 0.71 of that is from that shot that they couldn't get on target right in front of our goal with Harrison Mayo flailing but that is how to take a corner we're training the set pieces and that was a beauty Hughes with the corner near post flick on from McLeod to street at the back post boom no chance for the goalkeeper there we are beautiful flick on street there on the back post absolute quality well worked goal there well worked but we do have some tiring players and I am concerned about how this might play out over the course of the next half. McLeod, Tizard, Street all looking like their condition is reducing quite significantly. 
So almost an hour in, it's a much more even match in terms of possession than the first game. We've created that opportunity, but it is still a finely balanced affair. We're not letting them create much. We're not creating that much ourselves. I think this is going to be the story of our season. An opportunity for them to play a through ball, which does reach their attacker. Tizard falling asleep there. Mail manages to get the parry in, though. Tizard gets the clearance away to as far as Maidlin, who lumps it up to Street. Hughes has an opportunity to put Street through here, which he does. Street doesn't have the runners, though. I was expecting Far there to be charging past him, but no, I think these players are trying to save their energy for next matches. Mail is at least keeping the ball out. He's made a couple of good stops this match, which is nice to see. He's getting a bit more consistency, which is what I would hope for a player who's in his early 20s. An important skill to build, but Mail can only clear it to Hastings, and the ball comes straight back to us. Only to Maidlin, though. This is some proper Route 1 stuff. I have to say, as good as the results have been, this is absolutely appalling football to watch. I can only apologise to the Worthing fans on behalf of the board, on behalf of the staff. I would prefer us to play much more entertaining football. I would also prefer us not to concede goals like that. Seeing these results, seeing how we're actually performing, we are not making any effort to actually retain the ball. This is hit and hope stuff. We get the ball back, we hoof it straight up the field. Our players are tired, we're not rotating enough. Now we go to extra time, which is the last thing we needed ahead of a top of the table clash with Western Supermare. Ben, why do you do this to me? I was fully on your side just a few minutes ago. Tizard lumps one straight to the Hastings defence. Talent Ayite on the ball comes to Saunders, who chips one through to Miles Meekums, who does get through. He's got an opportunity to score the winner here, potentially at the start of extra time. All we need to do now is keep the ball, slow the pace right down, Ben. Retain some energy for the match at the weekend. We managed to get the ball and actually a beautiful crossfield ball from Alarakia to the oppo to the opposite wing. Saunders, a loose ball there from the defender, but then Saunders just takes too much time on the ball. Alarakia now has an opportunity to put the ball across and Miles Meekums. Everyone is just far too tired. Far, far, far too tired. As I say, dreadful to watch. These players are not conditioned to be playing. <laughs> 120 minutes having just played 90 minutes at the weekend just lumping the ball straight up again to tired players who haven't got the legs to run saunders manages to cut it across can alarecki get on it he can but it's taking too much time hughes no can't find the finish oh this is appalling woeful tired football we've got good passers of the ball in our team we've been looking for players who can retain possession that's in the club's dna and i was hoping that we would utilize that when ben first joined the club he wanted to play a fluid counter-attacking style he has evolved to route one over time saunders though is clean through here he's got no support so he's attempts to finish himself that's half time in extra time so we are resting far street mcleod and racine for the match against western supermare but there's Maidlin, Tizard, Collinge, Whittingham, Hughes, Alarakia. I really doubt they'll be able to make it. And what I can't do, of course, is that cheeky football manager trick of sending the players off to rest because I don't have that say. I'm the director of football. I'm not the head coach. I'm not the team manager. But Saunders there was looking to get into the area. He does have... Uh, Miles Meekham's in the middle and is that a foul? No, it's not. It was a fair challenge, apparently, by the Hastings defender. But Alarakia, despite being absolutely shattered, wallops the finish in there to secure the, the victory for us. That looks like we're going through now to play Lewis again in the following round. Whittingham managed to catch on to the loose ball. It was deflected and Alarakia, just as the ball was rising, actually looked like it got a deflection on the way in. But Alarakia hit it hard enough for it to not matter. And, oh, Alarakia steals the ball away there. Cuts the ball inside to Whittingham. The players are too tired to run through to create opportunities. But Whittingham is there. And, oh, my word, what was that? A, 
18 yard outside of the foot finish. What an incredible goal from Whittingham. So he picked the ball up almost on the halfway line, ran into space. There were no runners for him. So literally just flicked the ball with the outside of his foot in off the post. Goalkeeper, no chance. Whittingham, sir, that is an absolute goal of the season contender. If that's going to increase his confidence and give, us more, give him more opportunity to score fantastic goals like that, then I am all for it. Now, Miles Meekums is sent through by a good through ball from midfield there for once. And there we are. It's the fifth. Why couldn't we have played like this in 90 minutes? We've scored four goals in extra time. So Miles Meekham showing he can play up front as a lone striker. Excellent. That increases our squad rotation options through the year. Well, a 5-1 victory after extra time looks like a fantastic showing for us. Although they themselves had an XG of 2.6 and Mail played a blinder to keep them to only one goal. The team who finished the match on the pitch, all with the exception of Collinge, played a cracking game, actually. Collinge, I'm concerned about the way he's being played out of position on the left there. I would much rather see Norville Williams or Adam Olim in that position. If we look seriously at this XG table, though, they did outperform us on XG within the 90 minutes and possibly should have won 2 1. And we now have a squad that is going to be very, very tired for the match at home against Western Supermare. If we were to think about moving Ben on, looks like Kyle Storer here would play a vertical tiki taka style with formation that the team are already very familiar with. He does have his National A license. He's a better judge of player ability and potential than Ben. Slightly higher tactical knowledge. A bit better at people management. If I did sign Kyle Storer, he would cost me £300 a week. I really, really want Ben to succeed, but I'm not seeing the type of football that is convincing me to keep him on long term. Let's see how we perform against Western Supermare. Right, moment of truth. Worthing in seventh against Western Supermare in third. Who is Ben going to select after that three and a half hours worth of football we've played against Hastings? Well, Taylor Crossdale makes it in up front. Hughes is selected, but we do have a few changes. More squad rotation coming in, so that's good to see. Charlie Farr, our vice captain, has the armband. Hughes floats a corner in that comes to nothing, but it comes out too far. Hughes then has another opportunity to set one up. He cuts to the byline. White! And it... Oh, it just rattles past the post it's another corner hopefully those set pieces that we've been working on will come to something Hughes to the near post there's an only more oh it's just off the post and back out well early signs are positive that we're creating opportunities although mostly from corners we are restricting western supermare though they're yet to have a shot on target that's their first one looks like from miles out because their XG is very, very low. We have another set piece. Hughes floats it across. Allardyce! 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 Now that's Allardyce who came to me before this match to say he was frustrated with the lack of game time and I had to agree to send him out on loan. I offered him out, no one came in for him and I must say I am delighted with that. He did play great for us last year, has struggled simply because of the higher caliber of player that we've brought in to play in central defense this season but a cracking cracking finish there Hughes now tiring probably won't even make it into the second half he's on a 7.5 but his condition is absolutely dreadful so there are some familiar faces from last season Lewis White, Lamin Sheriff, Miles Meekums there Talent Ayite back in the team for the second match in a row. If we keep this up, oh my word, what a result this will be given the exhaustion facing our players. Although having said that, it looks like Western Supermare might have faced similar circumstances. They are also very, very tired. More of their squad than ours, in fact. So it looks like they haven't been able to rotate in the same way. And I wouldn't be surprised if they went to an FA Cup replay in their previous match as well. But, oh no, 10 minutes to go. They get a free kick. This is going to be a dead cert goal. Oh, it's over the top of the bar. Well, we've made some substitutions by the look of it. Clark has come on. Racine is on. Pierce has come on up front. 
We are in the 92nd minute. There are four minutes of stoppage time. And surely that was offside. That must be offside. Thankfully, Western Supermare just hoofed that ball straight over the bar. And amazingly, we do manage to get the three points. We created barely anything of note in that second half. They were a much better attacking threat in that second half, but it didn't matter. Honours very much even in most aspects of the game, apart from the most important one, goals. And there we have it, 10 matches unbeaten in all competitions. We're up to third place after 10 games played. Only three points off the top. Watson wants to build from this, gather momentum. The mood's positive around the team. Is it? Yes, it is. Well, several of the players are unhappy. Yep, yeah, that's, that's a shame. But the club atmosphere is positive. And that is mostly down to this man. I'm not going to offer him a two-year contract. I will, though, accept that £210 a week demand. He, however, wants to be locked in for two years. I'll tell you what. Let's make it a contract extension after promotion, Ben. And now he's playing hardball. He is demanding two years in that case. Let's try £200 a week for two years. He's happy with that. The question is, am I? So I'll finalise that offer. But am I happy with that, looking at the other assistant managers who are available? Am I missing a trick? We haven't played convincingly in the matches we've seen today. And there are other options out there. But how can I argue with this? We've lost one match against Concord at the start of the season. And Ben came in and turned around what could have been a disastrous season for us last year. But I'm so torn. Am I being unrealistic? Am I looking for a brilliant, perfect option that just isn't quite there yet? Please let me know in the comments. What should I do? Should Ben stay? Or should I be looking for someone else to come in and take the reins of this team? Do you think that with Ben in charge, we can get promoted this year? Well, while we're all pondering the answer to that question, I'm going to plough through October and November and get us through to the start of December. By then, we'll have a much truer idea of how Ben is keeping our form going. Or not. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched today and enjoyed seeing me squirm trying to make these difficult decisions about assistant managers and whether they should stay or whether they should go. But please do drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on to find out the second the next one drops. And of course, in the meantime, just be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon, hopefully with some answers about Mr. Watson's future. <laughs>